from the Daily Mail. New York City's migrant debit cards are costing far more than Eric Adams claims. My friends, do you know what the cost per migrant is going to be for this debit card program? I heard $10,000 $10, per migrant. Sick. Wow. I got to get down to New York, man. I just want to say this right now as we begin the segment. My friends, share this clip. Clip this segment, this, this, this segment right now. Give, give it a few minutes and share with every Gen Z person you know. And I would love to see these like Gen Z Democrats give an explanation for why it is they can't afford a place to live. They can't afford to have a family. They can't afford to start their lives the way all of their, their, the past generations did. But the city and this government are giving tens of thousands of dollars to these non-citizens who just got here. It is what what is the estimate? Somewhere between 80 and 100 thousand dollars per year spent on non-citizens. I would say this right now. See, maybe maybe the game plan is the big ask. Give illegal immigrants 100 grand. And then when they come out and say, OK, how about we give everyone in America 100 grand? People are going to say, well, it's better than the illegal immigrants. And then you get universal basic. So income. they're going right. to per immigrant. They're going to give them eight. 80 to 100,000 a year. That's I think, the it's, I think it was $88,000 spent this would on the immigrants be, because, because it, they're not giving them cash, but they're giving them luxury I, hotel rooms. I would imagine in the 90s, in the late 90s, this would have caused national riots. If there was an influx of illegal migrants that were getting 100 grand a year, or even for inflation, 47,000 a year, people would be out on the street in droves. This is since, since, since the late 90s, there's been like 25 years of graduating classes of people that have been indoctrinated with the with the ideas that the that this is just perfectly fine that that borders don't matter that that an economy can sustain an infinite number of people that come in that you can print money at will and just go ahead and print it out to people and they'll just you know that that won't affect your economy these are things that are that are taught in schools people don't come up with these ideas on their own like you've got 25 years of at least 20 years of colleges teaching mumbo jumbo in humanities departments so badly that it is infiltrated into the regular sciences you have and and the case in point is there is there is not a gender binary, which there obviously you see, is. Eric, Eric Weinstein's even buying into that now. Exactly, that was yeah, wild. I saw that. Yeah, totally. which I mean, it, and it's like, look, you, to get to the very basics of the fact that it's gender binary, there are two kinds of gametes. There's big ones and little ones. That there's big ones that sit there and little ones that move. That's men <laughs> and women. That's it. Now there's there's different. There's people that have an, there's anomalies that happen, but that doesn't change the fact that there are men and women. And this is you so know, that's so, just biology. This is where the breakdown has begun. I mean, Eric Weinstein, he's got this viral clip going around where he was being interviewed and he says, it's not true that there's only two genders or sexes because intersex people exist. And this is the exact same logic of two plus two can equal five because sometimes it's 2.3. <laughs> and it's like, well, 2.3 is a definitive number, 2.3. Intersex people are definitive people. They're intersex people. That doesn't mean there's more than one sex. But when, I mean, even Eric Weinstein has begun to espouse this, it's like, what is he giving up? It was shocking. And it was on Chris Williamson's podcast. And Chris pushed back. He's like, well, you say there's more than two genders. But he's like, do you mean sex? Are you talking about two se more than two he sexes? Try, he tried to give him the out. Yeah, and and, he didn't and Eric's it. like, yeah. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Are you kidding me? Why would you believe something you don't understand, dude? You're a scientist. Yeah, that was crazy. The the uh, Colin, uh, I forget his last Colin name. Wright. Swipe, Colin Wright. Swipe Right uh, did a great, uh, his, he's at Swipe Right on Twitter on X. He did a great response to Eric. He went through the, the specifics of, of the thing that uh, Eric was confused about, offered to talk to him about it and, and stuff. And I'd love to see Eric uh, reach out to him. It's it's a very easy thing to understand, and Eric is is way too smart to. to well, make that's the problem that. with back, with back, intelligence, back. man. Without wisdom, intelligence is a is a super villain. It's a it's a it's a nasty thing to have intelligence have you, with have, no wisdom. Have you guys ever met someone who is like factually smart but couldn't connect the dots? That's exactly what I'm mm -hmm. talking about, right? And and that, and that's that. I've I have met a, a handful of people in my day where it's like. You ask them, who, who is the author of that book about, oh, oh Ray Bradbury. Like, mm -hmm. what, what was the person? Oh, this. Like, what's 17 times 47? Look, bang. And then when it comes to connecting the dots between different areas, they they have a hard time understanding. And that's, that's what it feels like with Eric Weinstein. He's a really smart guy. He knows math. He knows all of his facts and details. And then when someone proposes some kind of argument, he gives he gives a mangled, confusing social response that makes no sense. 
I, I don't and like it's like not knowing when to stop talking and let's start listening. That's a big let's go, part let's, of let's, having let's, intelligence let's, with no wisdom. Let's go back to the main story though. Yeah. Back to uh, immigrants, criminal aliens being given money. Uh, how do you stop it? This, this this needs to be sent to. I'm gonna say it again. Every Gen Z person, and just be like, I don't care who you vote for. I literally don't care who you vote for. Don't complain to me. Don't complain about boomers. Don't complain about millennials if you're going to vote for Democrats knowing they're doing this. This is going to be the entire, I'll, I'll spoil alert here for the whole 2024 election, okay? Republicans will spend $5 billion versus the Democrats $5 billion, about $10 billion this cycle. Democrats will say the Republicans have a war on women, right? They want to take us back 50 years, anti-abortion. That'll be the whole message. I mean, wall-to-wall TV coverage. This is the Republicans' message. Now, I agree with it. I think we got to close the border. We got to figure this out. But the more they do this crazy stuff, the more it's just going to play into that, you know, and it's going to it's going to create a wedge issue. I mean, it's already there. If, Turn on Fox all day. That's all they're showing. Right. If, they, they know that it's the border wall. It's the border wall. If and you are showing that if you are Gen Z, you should be on TikTok. You should. So here, here's the strategy. Go on TikTok. Do not disparage migrants as individuals because TikTok will ban you in two seconds. But the workaround is to criticize the to question. Why are they being given up to 100K per year in value in luxury hotels while we can't afford to eat or sleep or pay rent or start families? Ask that question. Make that go viral. And we'll probably, I think we're going to pull this up, but they're now they're talking about giving them citizenship through military service. Like, are they just grooming the next generation of fighters to go fight in the Ukraine? And, and then, then the, but the problem is if you have foreigners that don't understand the ethos of your nation in the army, they're way more willing to turn on the people. We'll, we'll, we'll get into all that stuff for sure. But the reason why we're doing a segue with this story is we're talking about New York being politically corrupt, going after Donald Trump. Yeah. How? Multiple fake court cases. A 30-year-old claim of, uh, of rape, which was actually rejected by the courts. They held him li liable for, I think, sexual, some, some, like, I don't know if it was sexual abuse or something was, like was that. Was there evidence, any evidence in that case? Was it all testimony? My Just understanding is there's no, there was no evidence at all. He None. said, she said, that's it. But 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 even beyond that, like uh, there's no way, there's no evidence. And eighty million, they they eighty three million, just bang the gavel. So you have abject corruption in New York government, not just in going after Donald Trump, but giving taxpayer dollars away in one of the most heavily taxed states to people who aren't even citizens of this country. I think the, a problem with New York is that it's too centralized in that city. Uh, the whole state is sucked in by that that town, New York City. And I maybe California has a similar problem with L.A. and San Francisco. They just absorb the power and they make decisions for the rest of the tens of millions of people. I don't think it's as pronounced in California because there's multiple cities that that have uh, similar politics and, right. and stuff, whereas New York City is such a behemoth comparatively to the rest of the you know the rest of the state. You I think mean, it's you think it's savable? I mean, do we really think New York City savable? I mean, uh, that's why I say yes, it, because yeah. yes, because that's where Wall Street is. Yeah. But I mean, savable. But like, how long would it take? Is it worth the fight? Right? Like when we're talking about the vest thing and asking these people, hey, does it make sense to move? I mean, look, old old New York was once New Amsterdam, right? It goes way back, <laughs> right. and there was a period where it was a great city, and then it fell into disrepair. in In the eighties, it was it's late seventies and the eighties. It was awful, and then you got Donald Trump. Real estate revitalization, Mayor Giuliani, things started getting cleaned up, whether people liked it or not, the policies that were being enacted, ultimately resulted in New York becoming very safe, and now it's falling apart again. Yeah, Hurricane so, Sandy was nasty, man, Manhattan got flooded. That is not a safe place to live on a basin, on an island, land, like if you're trying to get off that island in a rush, I doubt it, because good luck if you try. Well, I mean, people that live there kind of know, like, you kind of go into it knowing that, like, if there's, like, some kind of, like, massive, like, uh natural disaster you're kind of stuck everyone knows that it's you know you're walking out you know it is an island yeah you if, had to walk if, everyone had to walk out when they lost power a couple years back or whatever if everything starts breaking down and you are in new york and you're on manhattan island you're doomed. Yeah. i guess when you say savable what do you mean exactly save i guess what i'm saying is it worth the fight right is it worth it is this a is this a the pendulum swings back three years from now you know and the people have had enough they're fed up and they're like you know we need to fix this or does it take 20 years does it become and, like and if I'm if I'm the guy in New York City, right, I'm getting out. Like I just think, you know, get somewhere, go somewhere, go to a red state, go somewhere you can build something. And I I just think that, you know, who wants to wait around for? I mean, the, they're not coming in our direction. It's still, I mean, look at this stuff, right? They're still going in the opposite direction towards insanity. 
So it's not even like we're at a, a, a pause and it's like, all right, where do we go from here? I mean, there's a new story every day about just the crazy stuff they're doing. So I just don't think it's worth the fight. And I do think you brought it up earlier, you know, the national, I shouldn't say divorce, but like, you know, are we going to have a kumbaya moment or does it make sense to get out? I mean, I think eventually you're going to have states that are going to have to push back. I would advise anyone living in New York City to leave the city for a short period of time because I, I lived in New York City. I didn't leave the city for two years. I lived in it because you can do everything you need there forever. And it smelled so bad, but I didn't re realize it till I left. Yeah. The brake dust, it's these yeah. fine particulates of black, right. whatever it is, coal, light. carbon that yeah. goes through the avia. It's so small, so fine that it goes through the alveoli in your lungs right into your bloodstream. Like, I don't know the exact... Um, metabolic thing but it's nasty way way worse than a lot of other forms of carbon waste yeah. and it is just it, you'll find black dust on your oh, break right. dust on your like windowsill and yeah. stuff and like the people throw fish guts on the ground outside after they get done with their the fishmongers in the day it is nasty there get out for like two weeks and then go back and then you ever, make your you ever, decision you ever walk through chinatown yeah open air Oh, the seafood. smell on Houston yeah. Street, dude. It is just, you'll see stains I mean, I on gotta, the sidewalk where they throw the fish guts every day. I, I got no problem with the smell of fish. Like, it's food. <laughs> it's the putrefactive of bacteria that's disgusting. I, like, dude, welcome to the world. Like, Ian, people Ian, are selling fish. There's going to be the smell of food. They dump it in the sewer. They're not supposed to do that. This is, this is the thing, like. <laughs> He's just dogging New York <laughs> City out. <laughs> Man, it looks this, cool. This is the thing about Fear Factor that always got me, <laughs> is that a lot of Fear Factor was today's challenges. You will eat food, and I'd be like, <laughs> "Okay." They'd be like intestines. I'm like, I had I had intestine tacos, I had pig intestines. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm all about can, crazy. Can, I don't. I had tongue. I like. So so I get it. They did weird stuff like eyeball, but like that's food. Like people eat that. But stuff. when they what happens is they dump it on the curb and into the sewer. Well, and I, I don't think they're supposed to. And then it just sits there. <laughs> and the putrefactive bacteria, the putrescine, and the cadaverine just feast on that stuff, and that's what causes like. Putre they, putrescence, basically. They, they are not supposed to. That it's, is correct. Yeah, I think it's against the rules, but they're just like, eh, but you, and then they let, spray let's, it. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.